Why don't we start with, uh, with drivetrain parts and, and other engine parts, and that leads us to Borg Warner. Yeah, I mean, Borg Warner is actually our favorite supplier. Uh, this is a very controversial name. I mean, most of their business today is levered to the internal combustion engine, and maybe you've heard there's a, a lot of excitement around electric vehicles. Um, I think what is underappreciated about the name and makes it a great opportunity is they've made some pretty massive pivots toward EVs. As a matter of fact, uh, on the last quarter, they just announced uh, that they have $1.3 billion uh, in business for 2025 already. That's pure electric vehicle that will likely go up by the end of this year, uh, by the end of next year, actually. Um, so I think they've done a phenomenal job at pivoting their core business from internal combustion engine to electric vehicle. And that really isn't reflected at all in the valuation. It's trading around five times EBITDA at a discount to the group, even though I actually see uh, above average long-term secular growth. You like a couple of the seating makers as well. Tell us about them and why. And we have buy ratings on Adiant and Lear. I mean, Adiant is uh, probably the one of the best sort of margin expansion stories going forward. I mean, they only did about a four and a half percent margin on a core uh, EBITDA last year, uh, and that could easily go to eight percent. So an, almost a double over the, the next, you know, three, four years uh, as they kind of just simply catch up to where their peers are. Um, so it's just a great multi-year story. And as you expand those margins, you typically see, you know, pretty good cash flow conversion, too. So I see a great margin story and a cash story um, evolving over the next few years. Lee is actually in a much stronger position in seeding. They've actually, uh, their seeding business is about 70% of the company and that's their cash cow. Um, and they have actually been leading all the seeding peers uh, in uh, profitability. I think the opportunity there is really more on the e-system side, which is their electronics business. Mm. Um, they're really made some smart investments in e-powertrain. Uh, they also do some wiring, uh, which actually benefits for electrification because there's more wiring content in an electric vehicle. I think that's the part of the company that doesn't get the full valuation from investors and, and one of the key drivers of why we have a, an overweight on that stock as well. It sounds like a lot of levers to pull on these names that you like, Colin. So why are you much more cautious on Vistian, which you have a sell rating on? Well, one of the main themes I look at in the group is sort of the growth names versus the value names. And, and we're really at a, a point now where the, the growth premium is, is at record levels. Um, and I see just much better opportunities on those perceived value names. Many of them are delivering actually quite good growth, even though they're not perceived as growth names. Um, and for you know Vistian, it really is a lot about valuation. Uh, it's trading at over 12 times EBITDA um, in a group that's at eight, and the value names are trading around five and a half. So I, I just think there's much better plays in the space. They're very well positioned, no doubt, in electronics. Uh, we're going to see larger displays, more digital displays, and that'll be a nice growth trend. But I think that's already reflected in the price. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.